Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Newburn Board of Aldermen meeting. At this time, the prayer tonight is going to be given by Alderman da um, Dallas Blackens. Yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, tonight we have with us uh, Pastor Fuentes from the West Newburn Presbyterian Church. We're going to offer our invocation. Pastor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's a great pri privilege to be here, and I want to thank Alderman Black Blackenstein for the invitation and the rest of you for your leadership and for all that you do. I'm the new pastor at West Newburn Presbyterian Church, and to be honest, I've been here hardly long enough to get used to the vinegar-based barbecue uh, that you got here in East Carolina, but I'm sure in time it will become a household favorite. Although I've only been here for a few months, I've been impressed by the accessibility of our local government. And in, in just this short time, I've had a chance to meet a number of you already in community events and fundraisers, rotary, and even on the street. And I think this uh, shows a great value in growth in our community. So together, let us now pray. <clears throat> Creator God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for the beauty that surrounds us in the community outside these walls and the leadership that's gathered inside these walls tonight. We ask for your guidance and inspiration as we engage with our community and listen to the needs of others. Lord, we ask that you be with our elected officials tonight as they navigate together the needs of our city. Give them patience, wisdom, and peace, Lord, with and for each other and the people they serve. And remind us, Lord, that we are not identified by our political party or what neighborhood we live in or even our race or gender or social status, but identified by your love as children of God. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Blackiston? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Mitchell? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Here. Alderman Kinsey? Here. Alderman White? Here. Alderman Odom? Here. Okay, everybody's here. Yes, sir, do you have something? Yes, sir, I'd like to add something to the agenda tonight due to the situation that's taking place on Saturday. Okay, what did you want to do? Uh, I'd like to make a motion that I could do something to speak on that. Well, you can do that under new business, or you can amend the uh, agenda and do it now. I or amend the agenda to do it now and get it out of the way. Okay, what, what is the purpose of, what is it that you want to do for, uh, for the record? For the record is for the, the uh, displaced individuals uh, that uh, lost pretty much a lot of their belongings. Okay. Does everybody understand that motion? And is there a second to that motion to amend the agenda? Second. Uh, the second was on the Taylor? Oh, 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 oh sorry. <laughs> oh, no. um, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. <clears throat> Alderman McKenzie, go ahead. I'd like to thank the staff for expeditiously moving. Uh, it was elderly people that was hit by this flood, and immediately I called DOT to find that could we get assistance to come in to help out. And shortly after that, uh, uh, the, the public works director was able to find the problem and solve the problem, and we're coming up with a, a budget <coughs> amendment. I mean, I think it's coming up soon that we can fix the situation. And we have some video to show what is taking place and where we are and where we're going and how we're going to take care of the situation. And I'd like for Pauline, if she don't mind, please to run the video. And then I'd like for Mr. Martin to come up and speak a little bit about the situation, how we're taking care of the situation. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Um, just want to give you a quick uh, rundown of the events that took place on Saturday, June 24th, uh, primarily between the hours of 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, during that period of time, we received somewhere between five and a half to six inches of rain, 
in probably about a 90 minute period. Um, one of the areas that we came across was the Westwood Arms Apartments and the Conley Estates, Duffy Field area, excuse me, Conley Estates and Derby Park area that received quite a bit of flooding. Um, on the map you'll see that they, they all kind of flow to the, to the northeast and actually drain past the public works facility into the uh, quarry. Um, one of the things, uh, just a couple pictures that uh, have been taken by several of the aldermen and sent in that we just kind of want to share. These are the double 60 inch pipes that actually cross underneath Newth Boulevard. You can see in the pictures that the debris around the pipe actually goes all the way up to Noose Boulevard, which is where the, the water actually rose during the storm. Um, this is just another picture, kind of showing it from a distance there. You see the trash and debris pretty much goes all the way up to Noose Boulevard. And then this is a shot of the Westwood Arms Apartments in the background. There was actually about three of the buildings there that actually received some flooding. It is just upstream from the Noose Boulevard crossing and the public works facility as well. And what we, what we learned during this storm was, you know, something that we've been talking about for a while are some of the drainage improvements that we've been looking, for, looking towards in the budget process is the upgrade of the storm drain pipes that actually cross underneath the stormwater facility. Uh, at that location, we currently or had dual 36 inch pipes uh, during the storm. Uh, the, the amount of water we received actually went through that facility and actually washed out the pipes and the road that actually crossed through the public works facility. Um, the, the good news, as I said, this is a project that we had on the radar in this budget season to replace those pipes, to upsize those pipes with significantly larger pipes. Um, I met on site earlier yesterday with Avalis Engineering, who's doing some drainage studies for us so that we size those pipes properly. And just as soon as we get that report, we will start the process of replacing those pipes with some larger pipes. Um, just, a, just a couple other photos here that were sent in. I think Alderman Black has been sent these in. Some of these are in the downtown area on uh, New Street and George Street. Um, go ahead and flip to the next one. And then the next two are on Cypress and Queen Street. These are a couple photos where we have another capital improvement already planned in this year's budget season to do some drainage improvements in these areas as well, enlarging the pipe uh, to try to solve these problems. Now, the one thing, the one thing I will say as far as that is, is you know, what this is going to do when you get five, six, seven, eight inches of rain in a short period of time, you're going to see some of this flash flooding. But, but by getting the larger pipes and getting things sized appropriately, it's going to get that water out of here quickly. Um, I don't think we had any major blockages in this area. I think Mark can, can tell you that we were, we were all out during the storm. And when the storm came through between, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night, by the time we were, we were down in this area by 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and by then the water had already drained out. So it's draining out, it's moving through the system, but we're going to work to improve the system with the, the $1.5 million that was budgeted as part of this year's process. Um, just, just a couple more photos. Uh, um, Mayor Outlaw took some photos. This is the new pipe that crosses underneath Trent Road uh, down on Red Robin Lane. You can see the water is maintained in the ditch and crossing underneath the new pipe. Um, and then I think we've got one more that just kind of shows the, the flow of the water as well. Is it black? And the next, the next one's actually got a little video and it's, uh, it's on Glen Burnie Road. Basically the water that crosses underneath this boulevard and travels down towards the quarry. Just kind of show you the flow of the water during the storm. Or maybe you can hear the flow of the water. <laughs> well, excuse me on that, Mr. Montaigne. Um, I think, mm -hmm. sounds I know that most of any new development or past developments normally have a series of engineering hydrology studies and things that, that under certain rain events and all these things work and all that. Um, and all that's designed that way. I'm not an engineer. <clears throat> but I do know that under events like hurricanes and all, all bets are off, so to speak, and no system is designed to work during a hurricane. I don't know that, that a system is designed to work in five inches of rain in an hour. Uh, only concern 
it's just like with that, I know that that, that new culvert there was designed probably for size that ditch. And I don't think whoever put that in with the state took into consideration because they're probably not geographically competent to know all the upstream um, problems that at some point are going to get worked out with um, all the drainage that goes all the way back to Southgate through here, borders that, goes out to food line, Chevrolet dealership, all that, and future impervious surface and friction and things associated with all that ditching. And I say that to say I beg and I plead anybody, state, city, federal government, please oversize these, these culverts. This is a brand new culvert. This is a brand new culvert. Five inches of rain, what are we going to do when we get a hurricane? Uh, did somebody go to that much trouble to build and put that improvement in, and we're going to have the same flooding conditions there that we've had? I'm not in any way trying to beat you up on this. I'm just saying I'm, I'm begging you to oversize these culverts because um, when you need them, I, everything I can read, you don't... You, nothing is designed for hurricanes and these events and so why would you not oversize the unit to get this water out because if it'll do that on that if you have a sustained two or three day rain event I think some people around here still still got flood problems and we thought that was going to cure it but that's all I got to say <clears throat> the, the only thing I will reiterate is that, you know the, we do have this in the budget to try to help alleviate some of these issues uh, we will start on the one at the public works facility here very soon just as soon as we can get the uh, engineering report back and the other ones will follow immediately after thank you so very much And we do have approved a million and a half dollars for those capital improvements. We've, we're, on, we're on the way with that, correct? Uh, we are. I think JR can give you uh, a little bit more details on the uh, process. Yeah, just, yeah. just real quick, uh, the, uh, uh, we're planning to bring to you in July, setting up a project fund uh, mm -hmm. for the $1.5 million stormwater improvements that was uh, uh, approved by the board uh, for us to do specifically with these particular projects. Mm -hmm. and, um, to the point of <coughs> Alderman, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mayor Outlaw's uh, comments. Typically, DOT uh, they'll design, uh, or it has been their their history to design uh, side ditches to a 10-year storm, uh, crossing ditches to a 25-year storm, and uh, most of the charts that we have for this particular rain event uh, go up to uh, a hundred-year storm, and this one was unchartable. Uh, that it was a you know, five six inch rain, uh, and in and, and a very short amount of period, uh, short amount of time. We've been having these Noah rains here for the last four or yeah. five years, though, and I, that's, that's what's that's what I mean. It's it's a pattern, and it's going to continue. And I I, I want to design for Noah the Noah flood. Mayor, just two comments I wanted to make. I was um, out and about during that storm Saturday afternoon, wrapping up a birthday party, and. Um, called Mr. Stevens and told him that there was something going on on this boulevard. I was headed to my parents' house and it was just about impassable. Um, within about half hour, um, there was five or six police officers there helping with traffic. Um, I know that Matt, Avery, and, and the staff got on board really quick, so I just want to commend them on that. It was definitely one of those storms I don't think anybody was really anticipating. And uh, the second and last comment I wanted to make, I was copied on an email from someone that mentioned the term um, this was just a little old rain event. What would we do if this was a hurricane? But um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we broke a record uh, Saturday. It was uh, since 1989, I believe, was the day. It was the most rain we had had in one day. So it was more than just a little old rain event. But uh, I do want to make um, give, give staff kudos um, because they did jump right on it. I think we are headed in the right direction with the 1.5 million improvements. Do, do, does the board think that when is our next workshop? July. 
Okay, would would this be a topic for the workshop? I mean, because you you have your finance, and then, and not that we're trying to micromanage. I, I really think the board should take a physical tour. I mean, maybe get in a bus and physically tour um, these improvements so that we know what's going on, so that we can keep our <coughs> residents aware. Uh, this this did, as, as Alderman Odom said. There are several of the uh, buildings that could have um, averted this with uh, some improvements they have for, they, they know where they are, has a history of flooding, but it happened so quick, they, by the time they saw it coming, it wasn't time to do anything about it. Um, so, correct, Tom McKenzie, it just kind of happened so it happened quick. happened so quickly because when we were speaking with the residents today, that they thought it was just going to be a regular rainstorm, but as we seen, as we seen when we, we was there earlier today, that it was a disaster for those elderly people. Some of them don't even have anywhere to go, and uh, I've been trying to see what I could do in finding uh, shelter for a couple of them. And today I was able to find uh, a place for them to stay, but um, it just came down so quickly, and we just, uh, we, you know, I just like. Uh, uh, all of them said that the staff was there on time to try to do everything that they could do expeditiously to move that to help the water to move. Okay, yeah, uh, yes, sir. First, I want to uh, recognize we have Commissioner John Sampson in, 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 in attendance tonight. Uh, this uh, just, just so happened that uh, we were talking about flooding and ditches. Uh, Mr. Sampson, uh, a couple of weeks ago, took a ride through the neighborhood and uh, looked at some ditches in the Duffinville area, uh, Deepest Court, uh, the hospital area, and he ran into a little couple of stumbling blocks. So now that we're gonna definitely speak about it at the work session, I would ask uh, Commissioner Sampson if we would, he wouldn't mind coming out to the work session in July for this. <clears throat> so we definitely need to talk about the flooding and ditches. I think they get a bus to go around and yes. take a look at these things. Thank you, sir, for attending. Thank sir. you. So just so I'm providing everything that I need to provide and have staff provide everything I need to provide. So are we, our work session next week, next Tuesday, is going to be a drive around work session. Is that, am I understanding that? You mean on the 18th? Yeah, I'm sorry, July the 18th, I'm sorry, yes. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that this board has found that uh, taking physical tours of has certainly um, uh, made them understand the, the physical needs a lot better than if you're not. I don't, I don't know how you can, if, if the board is serious about some of the drainage issues in Newburgh, they need to get on the bus ride around a little bit. Now, does the board want to do that? We've done this in the past. Um, Mayor Bayless, well, I don't know yeah. what the issue was. We physically took a, a, a bus tour on some items. So um, I don't know anything more, more, well, it's one thing serious, but right now, I mean, this is fixing to be hurricane season and I, I would, I'm for taking a bus ride at the I'm, I'll second that. I, we I, definitely I, can't, need to, I can't make a motion, so you. I'd like to make a motion on a work session. Uh, it'd be a ride, uh, a ride around work session, seeing what's going on in the community. Uh, as I uh, went to a cheap boys um, training, you learn more as you go out. You know what you're talking about if you go out and see it. So we're sitting here talking about f flooding. It might not flood <coughs> in your area. So you don't see what it affects right. the entire city, other parts of the city. So if we go out and see it as a whole, as a group, we can make a better decision on helping the deaf and fields, the deepest court, South Cage, right, all, over, all over the city. So I, I mean, that's my motion mm -hmm. to be a tour. Second. second. I'd like to make a couple of comments. Did, did you get a second? I second. Yeah. Okay. okay. Discussion? Um, well, just comments. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's great to look in your rearview mirror after an event like this, which is unfortunate that we have people that get displaced um, from flooding. When I was out Saturday night, I took pictures. I might had some of those up there. There are other ones. Um, two points here. Uh, for the last two years, we have arm wrestled over increasing the <coughs> stormwater fee so that we could deal appropriately with these types of unforeseen events. And Mayor, you're correct. We need to oversize, but we need to oversize our thinking in terms of how we approach these things in the future. 
not simply after the fact and we realize that there's flooding and the ditches can't handle it. The second point that I would make, the photographs that we looked up and saw up there on the, on the screen, <clears throat> you had water that was flowing through new drainage structures, culverts, um, corrugated pipe, but you also had in the older parts of the city, I'm sure most parts of Duffyville that I went into, where the water wasn't flowing, okay? And that right there is the problem that I was hoping that we would address in 2016, but we chose not to address it. So, yes, I think we did need to take a bus trip, but I think we need to look at more than just the rearview mirror in terms of anticipating the needs of this city and our citizens, our shareholders, Mayor, of all neighborhoods. Thank you. The reason water is not flowing at a certain point over to my Duffy fields, just like you saw them two, that water coming through those pipes, I've seen the water coming through those pipes filled up on the other side and just a little bit more could roll, it could come across that, that little bridge going in the graveyard. When the river rises over there, that's something I used to talk about all the time, when the river rises over there, if, if the river's high, it keeps that gate closed. If it wasn't for the pumps that you have in there, a certain time, a certain time they would be cut on, which pumps some more of the water out of the Duffy area. I think the last few months back, I asked that we go through there and clean it out and get it prepared because no telling what lot of happen. And as long as we keep right on coming up with issues dealing with flooding, and when we do work in certain areas and does not work totally in the areas that flood, it's gonna still be a flooding problem. If you got a flooding problem, you need to work basic, even the whole city can't flood. You need to work basically where the areas are flooding and been flooding for years. We've gotten that down a little bit, but it, it's still got a long ways to go. Um, Mr. Montana, I think under this being pretty much a worst case scenario, I, I know that the 21,000 gallon <laughs> pumps were doing all they could do and still weren't pumping out on, on Simmons Street Extension, but um, nobody got flooded. I'm, I know there was a lot of flooding in the yards, but at least it kept the water out of the houses, is that correct? The, the only flooding I'm aware of as far as the houses is the Westwood Arms Apartments. Yeah. Um, I, I will tell you the pumps did kick on, they were all running, they were all running full capacity. Uh, when we took our tour through the Duffy Field area and the Duffy Field Canal, the water was pretty much maintained to the canal. Uh, it wasn't up in the houses. Uh, we did have some backup in the Biddle Street Pond area, um, K and those streets over in those areas. Um, but that's just a matter of the time if it takes the pump to catch up with the amount of rain we had. Um, May I have a question for the um, city manager? What else was on our work session agenda? I was trying to think, uh, Brenda, do you recall what was Because I'm assuming if we start at 6 o'clock and we ride around with these projects, that's going to be the bulk of our work session, I would imagine. I think the only thing was discussion of opioid abuse. We've had that on there for yeah, mm -hmm. discussion, but we can we can discuss that any time. I guess. Mr. Stevens, would you want to start earlier on the mayor on the, on the sure. five o'clock? Uh, sure. On the bus, bus ride. I think it would probably behoove our interest uh, if specifically the board, uh, if you have individual locations that each of you want to go look at, that way we can draft kind of an itinerary and, and try to keep on that schedule and time frame if we're going to try to hit all of them before it gets too dark. So if we're going to do that, um, that way I can get uh, uh, a bus driver lined up as well as have an itinerary set so that we can get a route. Uh, I'm sure each and every one of you probably have some location that you want to look at. So if you will submit those to us, Brenda, myself, and Chrissy, uh, we'll make sure and get that stuff coordinated. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor. 6 p.m. would probably work, I think, if we started at 6 p.m. I would like to suggest that number one, the city has taken a, a a long needed step forward by budgeting the money to work on the stormwater system this year with the 1.5 million. Um, it, it's overdue, it's needed. But those monies were to focus on the absolute, was, was the bare minimum that was needed to focus on the, the absolute most critical portions of the storm, stormwater system that had to be addressed right now. It did not, that, that did not address 
the not quite as bad stormwater infrastructure that the city does not have. And what I would urge the board to, to look at as we, as this moves forward is this time to come up with a long-term citywide program to address uh, stormwater issues. Um, I think the ride around is a good idea. There are some areas that do flood, um, and then there are some wards that most of them don't flood. And if you live in the primarily non-flooding wards, uh, it doesn't seem a bit as big an issue. If you live in one that floods frequently, um, then it is a, a, a hugely high priority issue. But I, it's always a temptation to, to keep discussing and keep thinking. Um, but I think it's time to move towards a decision point and a, and a project plan to address this over the next five years. I think the city residents need that. I think they deserve that. Um, and in some places, it, it's an issue of the pipes. In the other places, it's issues, no pipes, only drainage dishes, drip ditches. But let's look at resolving the problem and not just discussing it. Okay. Yes, Mr. Monte, can, can you confirm that the 1.5 was covering just the critical? I thought it was the next level as well. No, I think we had a higher priority and then we kind of had a next level and it was the higher priority and did not include the next level or anything in the future. That's right. And how much was that? Do you remember? Top of my head, I don't recall. And, and, and just for the point of that, that was all kind of estimates on looking at it. We haven't mm -hmm. done actually real plans or real cost at this point. Okay, any, uh, any further discussion? No, sir. Your item, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. There was a, we still a motion on the table about the two Yeah, yeah. Well, you had a motion, and I think all of them white seconds. Yes, sir. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All in favor, the same. Thank motion. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, this time we're going to go to the consent agenda. Mayor, may we approve the consent agenda? Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Taylor. Is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number six. Consider adopting a resolution approving a notice of limitations of use and restrictions for property at 1397 Country Club Road. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, uh, the city acquired real property at 1307 Country Club Road for the purpose of relocating the Parks and Recreation Administrative Office's grant funds in the amount of $55,000 from the North Carolina Public Beach and Coastal Waterfront Access Program were utilized to acquire this property along with other grants. Uh, the grant stipulated the property was to be retained and used for public access. Therefore, in doing so, um, a deed restriction is necessary to reflect the limitations uh, needed uh, to execute and record with registered deeds, and that's what's before you tonight. Uh, myself, Attorney Davis, are happy to answer any questions you may have. Board, have any questions about that? It's a pleasure, Board, on item number six. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt resolution approving the notice of limitations, use, and restrictions for the property located at 1307 Country Club Road. Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman. Alderman Mitchell, is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call, starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Light? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Motion carries. Item number seven, consider adopting a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application to the Carolina East Foundation, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department is seeking authorization from the board to apply for a grant from Carolina East Foundation in the amount of $14,000. Uh, an in-kind match is not required uh, in this particular instance. If received, uh, the funds will be used to purchase ex exercise equipment for Stanley White Recreation Center. A uh, memo from Mr. Montaigne is included in your uh, package as well as a copy of the grant application. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of the grant application to the Carolina East Foundation. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Blackiston. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. 
Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Owen? Yes. Motion carries. Item number eight. Consider adopting a budget ordinance amendment for fiscal year 2016-17. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, ma'am. Members of the board, as we do uh, pretty much every year at the end of our fiscal year to uh, clean up our accounting, uh, we typically bring before you a budget ordinance amendment that includes uh, a, a myriad of different things, uh, and that's what's before you tonight. Uh, this final budget ordinance for fiscal year 16-17 ensures that all of these projected expenditures have sufficient funds to finish out the year and pay our expenses. It also realigns our revenues uh, to equal those appropriations. With regards to the general fund uh, tonight, amendments are being made to acknowledge additional costs for sanitation, leaf and limb, police, parks and recreation. Um, additional funds are just redistributed within various divisions of parks and recreation and public works to account for this. Administration's funds are reduced to provide for a transfer to the building funds to cover the cost of painting the clock tower, which we've already done. Uh, we'll be doing the roof uh, repair actually here pretty soon. Um, electric and sewer funds are amended to meet uh, the actual uh, payment in lieu of taxes uh, that is due, and the electric fund is also amended to redistribute funds within its various divisions. Uh, the emergency tele telephone system fund uh, needs modification to recognize ineligible costs, uh, and the grant fund is amended to appropriately reflect the bulletproof vest grant. Uh, the last thing that we have is the employee benefits insurance fund. And uh, that one before you tonight is, is uh, the budget amendment is to amend to cover additional claim costs, uh, including settlements uh, with employees through workers' compensation. So uh, we're happy to answer any questions you'll see in your packet. Um, Mr. Sapatelli has provided uh, an explanation along with uh, all of the different sections that are necessary for this final budget amendment. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Mayor, if there's no discussion or questions, uh, I would like to make a motion that we adopt a, board, a budget ordinance amendment for fiscal year 2016 and 17 for the operating budget. Second. Motion by Alderman Mitchell, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there further discussion? Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Motion carries. Item number nine, consider adopting an amendment to the grant project ordinance for the 2014 Bulletproof Best Partnership Grant. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, the ordinance to establish the 2014 Bulletproof Best Partnership Grant Fund was established on the 28th of October 2014. Uh, all of the accounting entries and expenditures have been completed for this grant, and at this time, staff is requesting that the project fund be closed. Uh, a memo is included from Mr. Sabatelli uh, with regards to uh, this item. I'd like to make a motion to adopt an amendment to the grant project ordinance for the 2014 Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Blackiston. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries, item number 10, consider adopting an amendment to the grant project ordinance for the city market workforce development training center, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, members of the board. Um, an ordinance uh, was adopted on the 9th of August, 2016, as you were called to establish a grant project fund to transform the old city warehouse on First Street into a workforce development training center and market space. The city has received uh, $1,298,250 in grant funds from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. Uh, the project ordinance that's before you tonight needs to be amended to recognize and appropriate these funds. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, by the way, just as an update, uh, staff is working uh, with the community college as well as uh, the county and other uh, groups that are associated with this with regards to us having a groundbreaking uh, sometime in August, uh, we will let you know about that. Uh, but uh, this is with regards to our, our big project out on the first street. Alderman Adams. Uh, yes, Mayor, just want to give the board an update. Uh, at our last C1A meeting, if you recall, um, the 
board was in agreement that we request uh, $100,000 in support from C1A for the Workforce Development Center. Just want to give you an update. Uh, Mr. Stevens, uh, Mr. Ruggieri, and myself made that presentation to the executive um, board, uh, actually the full board of directors for C1A. Um, we received some questions, um, some valid, um, some I would say not so much, um, but nonetheless uh, it was approved uh, for the $50,000 and then the additional $50,000 is going to be decided by the executive committee for C1A, uh, which uh, that's the city manager, county manager, um, Mr. Stevens, who else is on that? Uh, it's uh, myself and Frank Bodark, both city managers, the county manager, Jack Bite. Um, also, you have uh, Dan Roberts, Owen um, Andrews, uh, you have um, uh, David Stroud, and um, uh, Lee, um, gosh, I'm sorry, Lee's name escapes me. Lee Hodge. Lee Hodge, sorry. Lee Hodge, sorry, Lee. Um, uh, Lee Hodge, uh, who also sits on the executive board that represent the private side. So the reason I brought that up uh, is if any member on the board um, has a relationship with any of those individuals, I'd encourage you to reach out to them. When is your meeting? Uh, we actually have a, uh, a, a conference call that's scheduled for Friday morning. I, I would encourage us to reach out to them and answer any questions they may have because ultimately that small group is going to decide whether we get the additional $50,000 or not. And again, I'm not going to go through the whole spiel, but um, ever since the um, creation of C1A, each and every single meeting that we have had, workforce development has been the number one, if not 1A type discussion that we've had. And um, I think it's very important that um, C1A steps up and uh, with the money they have in the bank, I believe is around 1.7, 1.8 million, if I remember correctly. Uh, they've done a tremendous job of doing some fundraising. Um, I recognize that um, this, is, this is a significant ask, $100,000, but that board was created to help with economic development. And if you don't have workers, you don't have economic development. So I encourage you to reach out to those individuals. I have a question. Has uh, C1A funded any other workforce development programs in the county since it was established? To my knowledge, the Craven Works, um, the job, job fair, um, is what the biggest expenditure has been. I think it was $5,000 that they paid to the Sun Journal to help advertise that. So to my knowledge, that's the only expenditure that's been spent. But that was a job fair, not a workforce training program, correct? Correct. That's correct. Okay, anybody else on this item 10? All right, I'd like to make a motion to adopt an amendment, amendment to the grant project ordinance for the city market workforce development training center grant project fund. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Blackstone. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 11. Consider adopting a budget ordinance amendment in the general capital projects fund. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, uh, just some cleaning up here. Um, the general capital projects fund was established to account for various capital projects uh, that we have been working on. The projects for the Stanley White Recreation Center, Third Avenue entrance uh, extension has been completed. Downtown Information Center, uh, or the Cub House known as uh, to, to the uh, people in the community, has been completed. East Front River Walk has been completed uh, over where the Sudan Shriner property is. And the First Street Corridor improvements for Lawson Creek Park have all been completed. Uh, the net remaining balance of $8,330 will be returned to the general fund by reducing transfers uh, to the general capital project fund. Mr. Sabatelli has included the cap, uh, a memo in the packet. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. More any questions? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make the motion that we adopt a budget ordinance amendment to the general capital fu projects fund. Second. Second. Motion by Alderman Mitchell, saying of Alderman McKenzie is for the discussion. <coughs> Seeing on the have a roll call, starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries on. Yes, sir. Mayor, before we go to appointments, appointments I'd like to I have an amendment that uh, I'd like to do, and this one dealing with a uh, Field 
and Pleasant Hill. Okay, um, do you want to do that under new business? Can we do that under new business? Let me do it now. What? New business. Uh, new business, sir. Would that be okay, sir? Sorry to me. We'll be, we'll be there in just a second. Yeah. Um, appointment starting with Alderman uh, Odom? No, sir. Alderman White? Yes, sir, I have an appointment. The, the appointment I have is that Mr. Gary Allison, I appointed him last time we met. And when I appointed, he called me and let me know that he realized that people were going to be sitting up for a certain period of time. And he said that or that's too long for him to be sitting on his condition. So he asked me to withdraw his name. So when I withdraw his name, I, I had a list. So I, I'd like to make another appointment in place of Mr. Allison. The appointment I'd like to make is uh, Mr. James O. Woods, Jr. And I have the information, everything that I need to get to the uh, clerk. Have a second to the motion. Mr. Mr. White, what board is that for? This is the first one. First board, that's for the historic preservation. Okay, that's what I was on the HP. Okay, you have a motion by Alderman White, second by Alderman Taylor. Okay, um, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Anything else, Alderman White? No, sir. Other appointments? No, sir. Uh, Alderman Kinsey? Not at this moment, sir. Alderman Mitchell? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I have three appointments, please. Uh, first of all, I would like to appoint Mr. Ross Beebe to uh, the Board of Adjustments as the alternate and Peter Adolph's seat. He second. Is. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed say. Uh, my second appointment is to appoint Mr. John Skinner to the <coughs> Newburn Police Department <coughs> Civil Service Board. Second. Motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. And my last one, I would also like to make the appointment of Mr. Craig Bader to the New Bern Police Department Civil Service Board. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Um, Madam Secretary, you got all the motions and seconds, okay? I do. Thank I didn't mean to run too fast, but okay. You got anything else? No, sir. Alderman Taylor? No, sir. Alderman Blanks? No, sir. Okay. okay, attorney's report. What's the report tonight, Mayor? City manager's report. I just wanted to uh, remind, and I'm sure probably one of y'all have this on your list, but uh, being this is our last meeting in June, uh, we have our July 4th events uh, next Tuesday, a week from tonight. Um, and uh, in the case of rain, we'll be rescheduled for the 5th of July, which would be the next day. So uh, that would be the fireworks show uh, only at that point. So I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, make sure that the public knows about that. Uh, please exercise caution when you're riding around downtown. It will be extremely crowded and uh, there will be available parking. It will be uh, launched from Lost Creek Park like it has been for the past several years. Uh, and we encourage all the public to come out and enjoy uh, the fireworks that night. So thank you. Okay. Um, this time, the new business starting with Alderman Odom. None tonight, sir. Uh, Alderman White. None. You had your motion. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking about something else. Yes, I, I have. Uh, I'd like to donate a certain amount of funds to Duffy Field Community Watch and Pleasant Hill Community Watch for a national night out. I also found out later on that I have to do a reverse. Yeah. Um, excuse me. It, what Alderman White is asking to do is to make a motion to appropriate $400 each to Duffield and Pleasant Hill for the FY17 National Night Out. Yes. So he wants okay. to take it from his board appropriations. That's your motion, sir? Yes, sir. No, yeah. You have a second. We have a motion by Alderman White, seconded by Alderman Taylor. Is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed the same. Anything else? Alderman White. Yes, I, I usually donate to uh, it's, a, it's a medical fund, but I, I received a call, and I was telling Alderman Taylor, I received a call from uh, Dr. Barnwell. So that, that one leaving with a certain amount. I like to donate the rest of what, what I have to his organization. 
And B, you know the organization, but I can't sit right now. I don't have it written down. Yes, it's the NC Med Assist and Old North State Medical Foundation over-the-counter medication giveaway on August 12th. Does that mean it's not going to be 20? I'm clarifying his motion. Can you help him with his motion? Yes, sir. He's, uh, he's asking to uh, appropriate the remaining $200 from his board appropriations to uh, NC Med Assist for FY17. Second. Okay, and uh, did you make a second? Second. Okay, and Oliver Mitchell made a second. That's that's all from there. Yes, sir. Um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Anything else under new business tonight? No, sir. Uh, Oliver McKenzie. Yes. Um, and speaking about the flooding again, uh, a lot of homes, a lot of retirement places are built in a very low area, and. Uh, uh, it's been a lot of conversation that we give out permits to build a house in a ditch. That is not correct. Uh, that happened maybe well, about when they was giving those type of permits out when they was building the houses in a low area. We have a free board of 11 feet. Is that correct? Uh, we do now, yes. Yeah. So you can't build under 11 feet. But Nothing, anything new. Anything in, in like that anymore. That's what I was explaining yeah. to the people uh -huh. that 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 you know that's not what we do. And uh, so uh, I, I just want to make that correction there for the for the public, the ones that did not understand the building code, because we have several uh, structures in my district that I serve under that floods quite often because of the it's very low there. Um, to the Old North State, I like to make uh, a donation there, also uh, of four hundred dollars to the organization for the uh, medication that they would be giving away to people that cannot afford any meds. I, I apologize, sir. sir. I missed that. The, uh, yeah, um, go ahead and make your motion. I think <laughs> Alvin Taylor is going to give everybody a lot of information on this in just a few minutes, but. Um, I would like to, to donate $400 to the Old North State. Is that the name of the Old North State? It's NC Med Assist. He's based, Old North it's, State Medical Foundation is one of the organizations that's sponsoring it. it the NC Med Assist is the, uh, the top uh, sponsor, but you, you're, you're correct. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, second of all the Mitchells are for the discussion. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Anything else? Um, I think that's it. Um, I'll go to the uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, number one, I would also like to donate $250 from my Alderman Discretionary Fund to NC Med Assist. Second. Motion and second by Ta uh, Alderman Taylor. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Anything? Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, number two, um, I believe it is time for the board to start looking at scheduling the evaluation of our finance director. And I would ask Mr. Mayor if we could uh, ask if Alderman Odom would undertake to honcho that effort that she does so ably. I would be happy to, um, but what we've done in the past, Mr. Stevens, um, you want to tell them the process? Um, basically, whenever we um, uh, performed our charter change, we had some clarity as to who's going to be performing the evaluation. Um, it will be I that performs his evaluation because he works under the general supervision of the city manager. In doing so, what I do is come into a closed session and share the results of that evaluation with the board, and that's an opportunity for the board to make any kind of comments or additional uh, um, uh, things that they wish to see from the, from the finance director as far as his performance and duties. Um, typically, uh, we do that in conjunction with the evaluations that occur because I take care of all of my department heads based on what was approved in the budget with regards to increases in salaries based on their performance and merit. Uh, so at that point, that's when I'll be performing all of those. I'm happy to bring those. I think the last year was August, I think, whenever we might have been July. Uh, June. June. Huh? June. Was it June? Okay. Uh, so I'm happy to do it uh, and perform it whenever uh, the board so chooses. Okay. Left uh, Oliver Mitchell 
pine dry on that one. That um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That um, sometimes it's you know, and all due respect to the to the employee, you don't you, you know, it's not fair to the employee um, four or five months down the road that the person's not been evaluated, and so it's as much uh, for the employees good as it is the boards, and uh, so I just want to say that, and uh, we just didn't want. I don't think Ford wants this thing drag out. You know, sure. not, not things drag out, but so it doesn't drag out. I'd be happy to bring that to you at, at the next board meeting or, like or the, the second meeting in July, yeah, if, whichever one you would prefer. I think second meeting in July we don't, okay. would, would be fantastic, and thank you. Um, you know me, I always like timelines. Uh, and the third one, and, and this is the, the weightiest, weightiest issue of all of them, as we've discussed multiple times in the past, there is a great need to make some infrastructure improvements within the city. And I would like the board to move to take some next steps to ensure that these potential projects keep moving forward and do not languish. I have received numerous emails from constituents in Ward 3 regarding Old Airport Road, and I know that my colleagues have received similar uh, input from their constituents on Oaks Road. Uh, additionally, to increase the economic development potential in the main corridor of our city, I believe that we should include the Trent Road improvements as well. So to encourage economic development, ensure public safety, and to provide for safe and efficient roadways, I would like to make a motion that the board direct staff to develop a set of plans and design specifications that are sufficient to publish a bid for these improvements and to come back to the board with a firmer estimate specifically for resurfacing Oaks Road, National Avenue, and George Street from, Saint, from South Glen Verde Road to Pollock Street, widening and improving Old Airport Road from Taberna Circle to the bridge south of Evans Mill, consistent with our bike and pedestrian plan that takes it out to 32 feet, and widening Trent Road from two lanes to three from Simmons Street to Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yeah, motion. Got you a second. Um, any discussion on this motion? Yes, sir. May I just make one comment? Um, as far as the Trent Road corridor goes, it is important that we get that three lane. Um, but I did want to make um, just a comment during the discussion period. I know this is an exploratory sort of first step to move forward. That uh, there are some requirements from Columbia Development uh, for some improvements they have to make. So I just want to make sure we include staff ensure that gets included in our conversation because there's some improvements that they're required to make as well. So I don't want them to think that we're taking over all of the construction that's got to be done. So. Well, uh, Mr. Davis, uh, do we need to include that in the motion or in the spirit of the motion? Is that how would you like to do that? I think staff understood that direction, so I think the motion is fine. Okay. And, and there, there are lots of moving parts to that motion. I mean, for example, the city doesn't, yeah. even, uh, doesn't even have control of the airport road yet. But uh, certainly the step one is to, to find out what the cost might be and then talk with DOT about how we might move forward. Okay. Well, I, I think we need to clarify this because I think a number of people have been concerned that the city was putting these funds on a road that was not in uh, the city limits. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the vast majority of Old Airport Road from Deberna Way down to Old County Line Road is a city responsibility. Some of it is, uh, it, it's kind of interchangeable uh, on Airport Road. Um, the, the first section as you come out of Taberna Circle is the city's, then it switches to DOT. It stays DOT until you get to Evans Mill, then it becomes a city again. Once you turn uh, around the curve of past, Ev I guess past Evans Mill, then it switches to DOT again, um, which goes across the bridge and up to the terminus at Old County Line Road or uh, County Line Road. So at that point, uh, we would need to probably bring in DOT to confirm everything, but ultimately it doesn't change what your motion is, in my opinion, because you're directing staff to look at getting plans and specifications necessary so that we can go to bid and, and find out what that cost is going to be. Then at that point, I think what you do is, is we would probably start talking with DOT about their participation uh, in this program, which we've kind of already done uh, um, on several instances. Right, but most of that has been informal, whereas this is beginning the more formal process of moving forward with these infrastructure improvements that are so badly needed. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, yeah, motion and second. Is there any further questions or discussion about this item? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Anything else? I'm done, sir. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Taylor. Yes, sir. Um, as you heard, a couple of the aldermen here has already graciously donated donated some of the discretionary funds for a well-deserved event. First time event ever been in Craven County. Uh, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the event so you can understand why they did it and what they're doing it for. Uh, NC Med Assist and Old North State Medical Foundation, uh, Dr. Bowell and myself, we will be hosting a free over-the-counter medication giveaway day for those in need and reside in the following counties, Craven, Pamico, and Jones. Medicines such as pain relief, first aid, vitamins, children medicine, digestive aids, Benadryl, uh, aspirins will be available at no cost to all the residents. Participants will receive a minimum of 10 items valued at approximately $80 average retail price. Each event distributes over $120,000 worth of medication, over the kind of medication, depending on the number of individuals served. Um, it takes $7,500 to bring this program here. That's why we should um, requesting sponsorship to have this. The event is August the 12th from 9 to 2 p.m., 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Stanley White Recreation Center. Only restriction, you must be of age of 18 years old. You can be a millionaire, you can be on the street. If you say you need medication and get in that line, we're trying to do 3,000 people. We did it in Lenoir, Onslow County last year, we did 2,000 people. If I had to guesstimate, it was about five, 600 uh, military guys came off Camp Lejeune. So we do not turn around, if you're in line and you need the medication, you say you need the medication, we're gonna give you the medication. We can't determine whether you financial needs or your financial not need. So if you're in line, we're gonna give it to you. This is a program that's never been done on Eastern North Carolina other than Oslo, Lenore, and Dublin. Normally, uh, NC Med used to do it out west in North Carolina, but last year we decided to bring it to Eastern North Carolina. And after me going through a couple of events, I just said New Bern needs an event just like this. So this is why we're doing it. And again, I would like to thank each one of you all for giving up your own free will of your heart. And then with that said, Dr. Bonwell reached out to a few of you all talking about the program. And um, I let him do the talking to you all because it's a conflict of interest when I speak with you all in reference to something like this. So I'd like to make a motion authorizing city manager to use $1,200 from the community development line item and administrative department. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? Yes. Anybody have a question? Yes, sir. Question, uh, Alderman Taylor is, um, and this may be a question for staff, is, is there a way that we can advertise this on CTV3? I want to make sure that everybody in New Bern, like you said, yeah. regardless of where you live or, mm -hmm. or what war or anything else, that you have an opportunity that we're going to participate citywide. I know there were some restrictions on some things that we can and can't put on CTV. Yeah, I, I think we could uh, find a way to do that possibly. I'll get with Colleen uh, to make sure that we get, yeah, she said that, that she gave me the thumbs up, so I think we can take care of that. And get, that get and Facebook and yeah. Twitter and everything. We're doing Facebook, we're doing Channel 12, we're doing news, we're doing the paper, we're doing every item of advertising they're known to make. Um, so again, the word we'll get out, churches, businesses, schools, uh, Walmart parking lot, wherever we can get the word out, we're getting the word out. So again, thank you all for that. Okay. Joe, Madam Clerk, you got the motion in the second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Anything else? One more thing. Uh, free lunch all summer for children in our community. There's a program that's going on and I went to it a couple of times, and it's for all kids that are in need of a lunch. That's cut and dry, need something to eat, need something to eat. Um, it's held at Trent Park 
uh, uh, elementary school from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Havelock High School, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Craven Terrace Center, 11 to 12 p.m. Trent Court Center from 11 to 12. It's from Monday to Thursday, starting June the 14th, which is already started, and ending August the 17th. So if you know any kids, any kids that's out there that's, that's hungry, that need something to eat, have them um, report to one of these locations, and they, uh, they have a hot meal, have something to drink, and it's a nutritious meal, vegetables, something that they need to eat. So I just want to put that out. Again, thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. I don't know. Thanks. Yes, sir. Last but not least. Uh, I have a question for Alderman Taylor on the North Carolina Met Assist. Uh, it says that no ID is required, but is there verification that folks only get one contribution? They're going to have a, a volunteer sheet and have your name, your address, and everything on the sheet. You put your name on the top. Once you put your name on the top, we, we will verify your ID card. You've got to be 18. And then, we'll, then you pick your medicine. Well, in that context, I'd like to uh, present my motion for making a contribution of $200 to North Carolina Med Assist. I would also like to include in that motion $100 to each of the um, neighborhood associations for National Night Out to include the Historic uh, Riverside Neighborhood Association, the Historic Downtown Residents Association, the Gent, Historic Gent Association, and the Trent Court Residents Association, $100 each. So that's my motion. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Anything on your desk there? No, sir. That's anything it. else? Okay, anything else under new business? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I yes, have one question. And this is echoing Alderman Odom's comment. In terms of the uh, the, the lunch program, is, that, is it possible to also make sure that that is put out on scene? City TV as well. Um, I'll look at Colleen for the thumbs up, but I'm sure that's probably a, <laughs> I'm sure, yes, there's a thumbs up. So, yes, we can get that out there to me. Please, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, nothing further in new business. Do we need a closed session tonight? We do, Mayor, members of the board, we need a, uh, in a brief closed session pursuant to 143 a 4 to discuss a potential economic development incentive. And, uh, Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? A second. A second? A second. Okay, yeah, motion saying to go to closed session. All in favor of the motion say yes, sir. Hold on a second. I, I like to call for another part into the closed session with the person. Well how, 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 do I, how do I go about doing that? Uh, it, it would have to involve an, an employee that, that reports to, to the board directly. Oh that's yeah. a personnel matter that the board could, could discuss. Uh, otherwise we, we couldn't. We couldn't. You said that right, easy like. Uh, Happy to talk to you after the meeting and, and we'll okay. do it at, at some other some other time. Okay, this is serious. Okay. Okay, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same motion carries.